Good morning, everyone. Let's start with a recap of last week's lesson. Here are the answers to the questions. Question one. What did Jesus do that amazed the crowds? Jesus healed the demon-possessed man who was blind and mute. This miracle proved his power over the natural and supernatural world. Question 2. What were the crowd wondering when they asked, Could this be the son of David? They were wondering if Jesus was the promised Messiah who had come from King David's line. Despite the fact that Jesus' miracles proved he was the Messiah, the people still weren't sure as they didn't want to accept his message of repentance. Question 3. What explanation did the Pharisees give for the miracle? They couldn't deny his power to perform miracles and had to explain it in some way, so they said he could only do it with Satan's power. Question 4. How did Jesus reply to their thoughts? He told them it was silly and illogical and made no sense for them to say Satan kicked out his own demons. How can a kingdom fight against itself? He concludes if he didn't cast out the demons by Satan's power, it must have been by the Spirit of God. And then the kingdom of God has come upon the people, which really means he is the king. Question 5. What is the point Jesus is making when he uses the analogy of the strong man in verse 29? Jesus was saying, if you wanted to steal something from the house of a man that was strong, you wouldn't be able to take anything if you left him untied, because he would stop you with his strength. So you would have to tie him up, overpowering him, in order to steal things from his house. The strong man is representing Satan, and the house is representing Satan's territory, or where he has dominion. Jesus explains that he went into Satan's territory, which was the demon-possessed man in the story, and overpowered Satan with his authority, and took the demon-possessed man away from Satan. Jesus healed him and freed him. Basically, Jesus is saying, Me healing and delivering demon-possessed men and women proves I am stronger than Satan and I have authority over Satan. Question 6. In verse 30, what what warning did Jesus give the Pharisees and the people around him? Jesus warns there are two sides you can be on, for Jesus or against Jesus. You are either his disciple or his enemy either working for Jesus or damaging his work. You can't sit on the fence or sit in the middle and be indecisive about who Jesus is. Question 7. In verse 31, Jesus says any kind of sin can be forgiven except one. What is the one sin that can't be forgiven? Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is when someone rebelliously and deliberately hardens their heart and rejects the Holy Spirit's revelation of God's truth. And in the context of this passage, even attributing the Holy Spirit's power to Satan, the Pharisees claim Jesus cast out demons by Satan's power, which Jesus shows was foolish and made made no sense. So the only other logical explanation how Jesus could could cast out demons was by the power of the Spirit of God, which we see in verse 28. Jesus warns them that if they reject the truth that he is from God, which has been clearly shown by the Holy Spirit's revelation and power, they will not be forgiven. Basically, if you reject Jesus, you won't be forgiven. Question 8. Where does good behavior and good words come from? Hearts that are good. And question nine, where does bad behavior and bad bad words come from? Hearts that are bad. Now to answer our general questions. First question, is this section talking about God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, or someone else? Who are the main characters? The main characters are Jesus, crowds, a demon-possessed man, Pharisees, 
And then Satan is referred to as well as the Holy Spirit. Question two, what did I learn about the Trinity? I learned a lot about Jesus. He is the promised Messiah and has power over the natural and supernatural world. And we see this when he heals and casts out the demon. I learned that he is omniscient, knowing the thoughts of the Pharisees, that he drove out demons by the power of the Holy Spirit, that he is stronger and has authority over Satan, the strong man in his analogy. And I learned about the Father, that he is gracious and merciful to forgive all sins, except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Question three, is there a promise to believe? Every kind of sin can be forgiven, except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Each of us will be judged in heaven by every empty word we have spoken, and we will either be acquitted or condemned by our words. Question four, is there a sin to confess? Maybe you've been like some of the crowd, indifferent towards Jesus, and haven't accepted him or repented of your sins. Maybe you're not walking with Jesus, so you're against him. Maybe you can see that by your words, your heart is wicked, and you need to confess that. Question five, is there a command to obey? Don't rebelliously and deliberately Harden your hearts and reject the truth the Holy Spirit has revealed, or you won't be forgiven. Question 6. Is there an example to follow? I didn't find any. Question 7. What did I learn? I learned there are two types of people, those with Jesus or those against Jesus. I learned that to resist the Holy Spirit's convictions and revealing of the truth and choose not to seek forgiveness Repent and submit to Jesus' authority is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. I learned that what comes out of my mouth comes from my heart. If I say something mean and nasty, then that shows there is sin in my heart that needs to be dealt with. And when I say it needs to be dealt with, I mean that I need to confess it and ask God for forgiveness for it. And finally, I learned that everyone will stand before Jesus on the day of judgment and give an account of every empty or idle or careless or unprofitable word that they have spoken. Now your summary, what stood out or speaks to me? How can I memorize this and how can I go and do it? What stood out to me is that every person living in the world can only be in one of two teams or two sides, with Jesus or against Jesus. There are no other options. Because I've given my life to Jesus and follow him as my Lord and Savior, I belong to Team Jesus. So I could remember this by drawing or making a sports jersey or shirt, like the Springboks wear or like Barcelona wear or like the Proteas wear, except the logo on the shirt that I make will be for Team Jesus. I can stick it up in my cupboard with my other shirts, and when I see it, I can remind myself to daily deny myself take up my cross and follow Jesus. This means putting Jesus first in all my day and living for him alone and not living for me. Some of you may not yet be part of Team Jesus, so I would encourage you to think about the fact that there are only two teams to be on, Jesus or Satan's, and choose which one you want to be on. If you choose Team Jesus, it does mean you give him all of you and all of your life. It's not easy to be a Christian and follow and obey Jesus, but the Holy Spirit will help you. If you want to know more about this, you can chat to me.